And the fourth biggest trend that I would note is the pressure of time. So it's not just that uh, we have to be available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 360 days a year, but the volume of stuff that is coming towards us from all sorts of new players, particularly online influencers, is making our world very, very difficult. It means we can never relax for a, sec a second. Uh, and this is a reality now that confronts us every day of our lives. And it's very difficult for us to begin to di differentiate between what's really important, what's a trend, and what's trivial. And what is the, the issue of the day that's going to disappear? And the challenge for us is about how do we carve out time for reflection? How do we, in this really busy world that is getting faster and faster, take the time to stand back, to understand what's really going on, to be able to advise our chief executives of the real issues that we have to spend time on and focus on? And something that uh, some friends and I and uh, another academic, Tony Muzzi Falcone, have been thinking about quite carefully, I'd be very interested to hear your views on this, is how we work out the, a world where we can operate in fast time and slow time. Fast time, immediate dealing with the issues, but also slow time, where we have time to consider what the issues uh, and real trends are. Okay, so if, if growth, strategic role, complexity and the pressure of time are some of the big issues, what are the things that are affecting our day-to-day -day lives then? So some of the smaller trends. Well, first of all, uh, changes in communication are obvious. Channels, there's been a proliferation of channels, um, and you know them all, uh, and I'm not going to go through them. But what do we draw from that is that actually the meeting places where we all meet are getting less and less as channels become fragmented. There used to be a time when I went into the office and I would talk to my colleagues about what they saw on television last night. I can't do that anymore. It doesn't happen. Uh, they're looking at television at all different times and they're using all sorts of different channels to do it. So where, as professional communicators, do we find those common areas where we have, can have sensible conversations with our stakeholders, becoming increasingly challenging for us? And communication is multimodal. You know, we have a video, voice, words, pictures, and the latest thinking on this is that communication has to impact on people in seven different ways, seven different ways, in order for it to have real impact on them. So when we're talking to stakeholders, you know, just the written communication, it's no good anymore. They have to hear it three times and in seven different ways for it to have a real impact on them. And then, of course, there's the move to mobile, tablets, smartphones, etc. I see you all on your smartphones this morning. Uh, the way that data is being accessed and aggregated and shared is, is going through a revolution. At the moment, only 20% of people have access to mobile technology. But that rise is, is going like this. It's exponential, and it will become a fact of life for most people within two or three years. And then I draw from that that actually the visual is taking on more and more impact for us. The visual is really important because it has an ability to tell stories in a way that other media don't. It has an ability to aggregate data, powerful infographics, and present data in compelling ways. And you can pack into a short space of time an incredible amount of information through visual. So if we move on then to some of the implications for our practice, it's really interesting that uh, journalists now are turning towards corporate organisations, the enemy, to find jobs. And the growth in brand journalism is exploding. There are more journalists employed by organisations than there are by media outlets these days. And news from 
uh, from the gatekeepers, the traditional sources, is losing its power as corporations are able to tell c compelling stories and brand journalism is something that is going to impact on us and something we need to uh, become used to and use much more powerfully than we have done in the past. Personalization. So the universe, you've probably heard that phrase, so you, the universe now is really, really important. And uh, individuals thinking that they are, they are unique and they want data that's special to them, particular to them. There's too much information coming at them for them to sort it anymore. So the requirement for corporations to personalize that, literally personalize it, is becoming more and more important. And it's, it's the day of wearable technology. I haven't got Google Glasses yet, but it won't be too long. And it's that personal, creating a universe is the direction that we're traveling in. So another impact for all practice is that the way that we generate partnerships is going to be increasingly important. Partnerships with stakeholders in decision making, in creating solutions for our issues through crowdsourcing those solutions, in solving problems collaboratively with those stakeholders that are meaningful to us, and you know, positively creating communities and a sense of belonging to counter that sense of fragmentation that's coming uh, to a lot of people because they don't feel associated with the world anymore. That is a really powerful role for us to play. And the shift in content is therefore much more about cr creating a sense of community and about what our organization's purpose is and what we can contribute and creating a sense of connection than it is about telling people about the features and benefits of our products. Those days are dead. It's creating something that is meaningful for people that's uh, important now. And therefore, as organizations spend more money on communications, it's clear that we have to get much more adept at measuring the value that communications plays in our organization.